Okay, we're live. We are going to do a paint and sip because there's nothing else to do. I'm just looking at he actually used this canvas yesterday. I'm going to use it again today because I can. You can paint along if you want. You um you don't have to use a canvas. Remember, you could use cardstock paper or an old lunch bag or something just to get your paint because painting really is a very relaxing thing and because we're all going bonkers inside I stayed home most of the day like I was told but then I decided to come to my studio and uh, I finally figured out that I was yelling at my neighbor through the window and I thought you know I'm yelling hi and then I thought maybe I should get some signs that say hey what's your name because I don't even know my neighbor never got to know my neighbors. I only lived there a year, but anyway, I thought maybe I should get some signs to say, hey, neighbor, you know, banging on my window, yelling at you. He's only going to the garage, and that's so interesting to watch somebody do something. So I thought maybe I should come paint, and that's what I'm doing. I'm going to go ahead and start painting. Okay, what we're going to do is we're first we're going to get our brushes wet, just a little bit of water little bit of water and then we're going to start by using a bigger brush and we're going to put some color we're gonna paint maybe just like a f like a fall scene or something something kind of fun now I actually just sprayed the canvas with a little tiny bit of a mist of water just to keep it a little bit moist and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start by getting some of my favorite colors. Let's just start with a little bit of yellow. We'll just put some yellow up in here. Just put some yellow. We're not really sure. This is pretty much how I start all my paint and sip classes. But first I outline them all. I have books on Amazon that show you how to do this. It's basically a system that teaches you how to paint. Even if you don't like the subject, you're still learning a progressive system, so it's helpful to learn. And painting something over and over again is extremely helpful. Some of you may know that Monet painted some of his lily gardens um, almost 1,100 times. He painted the same painting 1,100 times Monet did, and he really got better by doing that. So if you find something that you like to paint, Go ahead and paint uh, as many times as you want. You will only get better. It's extremely relaxing. Okay, so we just put a little bit of yellow over here. I don't really know exactly how it's going to turn out, but we're just going to add a little bit more yellow. Usually in my classes, we map out things. We map things out. So basically, this would just be an outline here and an outline here. Let's go ahead and put some yellow down in here. We want to balance out the painting. Now, when I say balance out the painting, for the viewer's perspective, it's very much like when you go into a clothing store. You do not have to ask anybody what you like. You can literally walk through any clothing store and within minutes you can decide yes or no to almost everything in the store. That is exactly how painting is. Painting is either a yes or a no. Hi Carrie, so nice of you to watch. Thank you so much. Okay, so now we're going to add another color. Yellow looks great, but it's not going to be enough. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of magenta. I put a teeny tiny bit of magenta. My brush is totally wet. I'm just going to put that right there. Doesn't that look a little real pretty? We'll just add a few dashes of it to balance out. Now, I'm trusting my eye. I do not plan out anything. Hi, Holly. So glad to see you. Hey, honey, don't you worry. We'll get you all up and running on your wedding. Things are things get um, held back every now and then. And for whatever reason, I've always been told that there's something, something to be learned from it. And it will be better. It will just be better. Okay, so now we're going to add a little tiny bit of red. That was like a, a crimson. They call it crimson red. But I'm going to add some of this. You, this is maybe hard to see, maybe easy to see. But I'm going to add some intense red. Just something a little bit more intense just here and there once again balancing letting my eye. I'm going to add a little bit down here we're just putting some color on the canvas because we need something to something to play with something to work with okay so now we're going to go ahead I'm going to add a little bit of purple now I'm using acrylic paint see how this purple is really really light transparent I want to beef it up just a little bit so what I'm going to do is add a teeny tiny bit of blue to a red and I'm going to create 
my own purple see if I can't see how much more intense that is when you create colors it's a lot better you get a more intense look than a transparent that is a pure blue a cobalt blue and I mix with a little bit of red and look at the intensity of that purple let's just add a little bit over in here maybe a dash of it over here once again I'm relying on my eye to guide the way I never try and plan it too much in my classes that I teach and in my books I completely map it out for you so that um, it makes it easier now this just looks like splashes of color just splashes of color and we're gonna we got a little bit of a drip you see that drip running on there I'm gonna catch it I cleaned out my brush I dried it off on a little bit of a towel I'm gonna go ahead and pick that back up I don't want it to get away from me I'm trying to get a little bit of a balance put in a little bit of over in here now that looks that looks really nice so far. I mean, it has a splash of color. I'm all about color because color is just beautiful. And we are so, so fortunate um, to live in such a beautiful world. We really, really do. Um, if you look outside, you'll notice that there is color everywhere. And I'm trying not to move around too much. I don't want the camera to be uh, foggy or move. So I actually moved it all around. Okay, so now I have a little tiny bit of yellow. I put a little brown in there. That brown will actually mix. That's a two-part blend. You can see there's two parts on the, uh, on the end of the tip of the brush. Never try and get it too close to the ferrule. The ferrule is up in here. We want to keep it away from there, keep it down in here. So we'll go ahead and put it down on this area. We'll just give that, this looks like it's going to be a ground. When you add a ground to a painting, it tricks the viewer's eye into seeing some sort of a distance. Okay, and because I just added some sort of a ground, I'm going to take that same color, balance out my eye, and put a dash of it up in some locations. Not too specific. I'm not trying to get things. Oh, I got a runner. We got a runner. Okay, we got to grab that guy. You get back over there. Okay, I have my table set up flat. It looks like it's trying to stay flat, but every now and then you'll get a little bit of paint that will start to run. All you want to do is pick it up so that it doesn't get frustrating. Remember, painting is all about relaxation, having fun, and let's go ahead. Now we have these colors. This looks like nothing. This looks like Lisa came in here and decided to just throw color on the canvas. And that's how it rolls. That's how we roll, people. We want things to be good and colorful. Now, because we're working with acrylic paints, thank you for the hearts. Wonderful. Um, because we're working with acrylic paint, we always have the option of literally taking this canvas. If I wanted to, I could take this canvas. Don't worry, canvas. You're fine. And take it right over to the kitchen sink and hose the whole thing off and start again tomorrow if I wanted to. Hello to all of you that are waving. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so we now are going to try and create some sort of a flow. We want, to, we want it to look like something. Abstract art, while being beautiful, um, a lot of times it's a tough one for people to connect to unless it's their color genre. So most people want to turn it into something. So if we're going to turn this into, say, trees, because trees have all of these colors, especially in the fall, we're going to need to add a sky. So I'm going to put, once again, a two-part blend right on the tip of my brush. You can see that I added white, and then I just barely touched the blue. Once again, I don't know exactly how it's going to turn out, but what the heck, let's just go and see. Now that is an intense blue. I'm going to clean out my brush, and I'm going to touch the white again. Look at how the white blends with the blue. I'm going to grab the white again. I am trying this whole time to blend on the surface. When you blend paints on the surface of the canvas instead of on a palette, it actually creates a whole blend of blue. Look at that whole blend of blue that I get just from not over mixing my paints. This is called French Impressionism. French Impressionism is where you mix the paint right on the surface. Now look at that. Look at that beautiful blue. I have a skyline sort of shooting me back into there. I now have my trees. I also don't want to forget that in art and in life, there are, hi Cynthia, there are Curtis, Ron, Mariposa, um, SPCA. We love you guys. Come out there all the time. Trevor, good to see you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Okay, so we now have this beautiful Mar Marjorie Thomas. Thank you, thank you, and Doug. Yeah, woohoo, people are painting. Okay, now we have this beautiful blue. We know that if we were looking at these trees, we would be able to see through the trees here and there, 
So I'm going to just anticipate that I'm going to see through the trees here and there. I'm just going to add a dot of that blue here and there, all the while knowing that if I don't like it, I can once again wash the whole thing off and start again. Uh-oh, we've got a couple runners. They're trying to escape this one over here and this one over here. I'm just going to grab them and pull them back down. You guys get back down there, get into your neck of the woods. In order to secure that area, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more of that yellow to keep it from... Hi, Shannon. <laughs> okay, here we go. I'm adding a little bit more of that lemon to secure my trees in, let my eyes start to see it. I don't, once again, really know exactly how we're going to turn out, but I know that I want a soft wash. Now, if I touch this yellow with this blue, I got to kind of be careful. It will start to turn into a green. Nothing wrong with green. We love green, but green is a dominant color. Hi, Stephanie. Uh, green is a dominant color. You have to be careful with green. It does give you some sort of a grounding effect. So we're just barely, barely, barely going to touch the green in order to give us a nice grounding effect. And we're just going to put it down in here. What if this were a little bank of bushes? Hey, there you go. Nice bushes. There we go. Get your little bushy bush down there. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so now we have a very simple... We have a very simple layout. It's just color right now. We haven't added anything to it. You have to beef up the colors just a teeny tiny bit once you get them on there. So I'm going to go ahead and make a little tiny bit, see if I can do a little tiny bit of orange. See that yellow? The yellow, while being very pretty, it needs some more variation. There's almost a little bit too much. So I'm going to make a little bit of that yellow. Well, let's just see what happens if we add a lighter yellow. Now remember, in art, th in every single color, yellow, there's a light, medium, dark. When you add the light, medium, dark, keep it super simple so that you're always having fun. When you add a light, medium, dark, you actually, you're tricking the eye. It doesn't need to be too much more than that. You just want the lights on the top, mediums in the middle, and the dark. Right now, we're just trying to get some color on there, but I'm telling you that ahead of time because right now I'm adding a little bit of that light yellow. I added a little bit down here because I felt like it, and that is okay. But what I'm going to do now is, you see how we beefed up the yellow just a little bit? I'm going to go ahead and beef up that red because red is a bomber color. We like red. It shows up across the room and people were like, whoa, dude, check out the red. I love red. I try not to overdo it though. Red, while being super awesome sauce, it actually is like too much frosting on the cake. You want to add it, but you want to lay low a little bit. So you want to, once again, just like walking into that clothing store, you know what you like. You have to trust your eye. You have to trust your eye. And most of us automatically do. Most of us know exactly what we like. I'm going to add a little bit of that same red up here on my palette. And I'm going to touch that cobalt blue. And I'm going to make that purple again. See if we can get that same purple. I'm going to add a little bit more of that red to it. I'll just go ahead and show you. This is what I'm using purple on the brush. I put a dash of that red. I'm going to touch that. And now we have purple. If you're ever unsure what you have in the end of your brush, you can always touch the white and it will give it up. Oh, there it is. It shows you just exactly what I have. I touched my white. It gave up the color and I got to see. Now I'm going to add some more of that purple. I'm going to try out a little drama to my scene by putting the darkness on the outside. Hey, Vincent, how's it going? Thank you guys all for watching. I'm getting people from all over. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And adding that color once again. Now you'll look, we have a beautiful colored canvas. We just want to add a few more colors as if we could. I'm going to add some more of this green. You see how this green is real soft, pastel -y? When I start off the painting, I always start off soft pastel -y in order to see if I even like it. Because if I don't like it, I have towels everywhere around me. I've even used my jeans, my shirts, anything to get the paint off. And if you don't like it, you can move it right away. 
that is the beauty of acrylic paint acrylic paint hasn't been around that long but when it came out a ton a ton a ton of people got really good at art because they could uh they could literally walk right over to the sink hose it off start again and paint over it and readjust it so if you're painting along and you don't like something grab your towel no big deal and wipe the whole thing right off just wipe it off and start again and once again always go back to your eye your eye knows knows what it likes it can see a mile away now doesn't that look pretty we now have some color now you'll notice that these I'm gonna put a little bit of green up in here just because I see bits of the canvas showing through put bits of the canvas I'm gonna add a little bit of green over in this side area teeny tiny bit when I add the darker colors on the edges and the lighter colors that come in it actually pulls the viewers eye in it lets you walk somewhere so now check this out we have some beautiful colors we are like oh okay so now I have a nice scene I've got a sky I know I'm gonna add some trees I have a ground down here your ground brush blends will actually go in a different direction than the trees so let's Let's look at that for example when I hit the ground I go in the direction of the ground if I were to put my hands on the ground oh look doesn't that look like a bush what the heck we'll turn it into one we have the ground now we're gonna add a layer of ground when I put another map out another one I get two layers I now have this one closer and this one further away the things that are higher up on the canvas are further away from me the things that are further down the canvas are closer to me I'm gonna go ahead put another nice line I have now created a grounding spot when you create grounds in your paintings it actually tricks the eye in the eye into seeing it says oh there's this is closer to me and then as I go further away it gets further away now let's go ahead and add some coolness to our painting for extra extra fun let's turn some of these beautiful colors into trees let's go ahead and just start with this yellow right here and we'll just go ahead and put that yellow right there very nice now wasn't that simple we actually added the color now we're gonna add some trees I'm gonna go ahead and split that up just a little bit more see how soft simple little tree let's go ahead and add another one I'm using a dot of black and mostly brown let's add another tree right here let's go around our sky because we want to make sure to keep that go right there let's add another one here another nice tree we have some trees going on and there may be trees that come through up in here that we don't see the background there is always overlaying in the background you have to anticipate that the um, the the eye has to be tricked into seeing 3d in art and that's very easy to do with just a few keys of perspective the keys of perspective that I use are the same thing that you would see if you looked out any window if I looked out any window I would notice that maybe there's some overlapping and I noticed that the overlapping is that this might go behind that let's add some trees over here just for extra coolness right on let's just start right here wherever I think it. I'm not trying to make them perfect I'll make it go behind that uh, green bush now I'm gonna go ahead and add it so that break it up put it right here it goes a little bit off into that direction let's add another one right here let's branch it off all the while saving our sky we want to be able to see through things there's always overlapping in art when you that is probably the most overlooked tool in art hi Kelly hi Scott hi Vincent um, when you overlook when you have overlapping it really adds so much to your paintings so you want to purposely add overlapping and what that means is that this bush might be in front of this bush this bush is for in front of the sky this bush is in front of these when you do that it tricks the eye into seeing oh that looks more real okay let's add another tree right here super cool simple now look at we just talked about overlapping I'm gonna put this branch in front of that one what the heck I'm in front of you there you go okay so now we have this little bush down here wasn't planning on it being a bush but because of that remember accidents 
or some people call them mistakes, but believe it or not, in art, the more mistakes you make, the more you learn. So feel free to make as many mistakes as possible. You will learn 10 times faster if you're comfortable with mistakes. If you say, hey, I made a mistake. Oh, good. What can I learn from it? I actually had to learn that the hard way. I tried way too hard in the beginning. I don't try so hard anymore. Now I just rely on the art to guide my way. Back to what we were talking about in the beginning. It's so easy to guide your own way by the example of your intuition. Your intuition, if you walk into a clothing store, your intuition clicks in. It will walk by every single shirt and piece of clothing and it's either a yes or a no. You don't have to go asking people your eye knows. You don't have to have your mom hold up a shirt and say, is this good? Because you know it's either a yes or no. Now look at this. This is what I rely on. I rely on my eye. Now, I have a nice scene. I have created a grounding line so that I push the viewer's eye back in it. I created a sky which is as far back as I can go so that the eye starts to go, oh, there's a scene. And I created that openness so that I have somewhere to go. Now we're going to come back and we're going to beef up some colors. We want those colors to get nice and pretty. And what we're going to do is remember we talked about light, medium, dark. We're going to go back to the medium side of that yellow and just get a little bit richer. I know that sometimes the bushes would be in front of the trees, so I'm just going to go ahead and put some of the bushes right in front of the trees, letting it pick up some of that brown and drop it off. I'm going to make sure I touch all of the colors so that there is no canvas showing through. Now look at how rich that color is compared to this color. That's the, the medium yellow. Now if I wanted to add a little bit of darkness to that yellow, I would just add some of the brown because believe it or not, as the sun is shining down, the darkest will be on the bottom, the lightest will be on the top. Let's go ahead to the other side and beef up a little bit of those colors. Now when I'm beefing up the colors, all I'm really doing, hey Jerry, hey Rebecca, Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying this and relaxing. I know it's a lot of stuff going on outside. And I'm, uh, like I said earlier, I'm literally yelling at my neighbor out the window. And I don't even know his name. It's like I've never even talked to him before. Now all of a sudden I need to know him. <laughs> because he's the only one I'm really talking to. I'm trying to stay away from all people. I'm not even going to the store. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to go to the studio and I'm going to paint. And maybe you guys will paint along. Once again, I'm painting on a canvas, but you could paint this whole scene on a little 5 by 7 cardstock paper. Mail it to someone in the mail and say, hey man, I was thinking of you. Just, you know, a little, little happiness in your life. Because painting really does bring happiness. Hey Frank, how's it going? Alright, so... Now, and you know what? You don't have to get fancy on your paints either. You could literally go to Walmart. Well, I don't know if you want to do that, but you could just get colors um, and just any not expensive paint and just paint on it. You would be amazed at how beautiful just color is. Okay, so now we're just beefing up the color a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and switch to this really limey green, real lemony, lemony. See how that's a little bit brighter? If I'm unsure or it's not light enough, I can always add pure white. See, I'm adding that white. Now, because it's a bush, I'm going to give it a little bit of a curved line. In art, there are only two kinds of line. They are either straight or curved. These are slightly curved. See how that color just mixed into that color? Great, whatever. I'm happy to do that. Remember we talked about mistakes are the cherry of life. Go ahead and make all the mistakes because we want things that are too perfect um, don't seem real. You know, even in nature we say, oh, you know, we have, you know, winter and that's not so perfect. But to some people it really is. Winter is an awesome season. It gives everything a chance to breathe. You get to go skiing, you know, s shovel snow. And it's not so bad if you haven't had to shovel a ton of it. Okay, now I'm just going to go ahead and add a little bit more pure white down here because I want to make sure to keep the tops of all of my images light. Keep the tops of all the images light using a slight curved line, a little tiny bit of a curved line, in order to create those bushes. Now I have a little bit of a light yellow in there. I'm going to go ahead and take that yellow and drop it down in here. That's that same color. I didn't add any more to the brush. Add a little bit more in here and add some white. A little bit of lightness. See how I'm going back and forth? Because when I
I go back and forth, it actually seems like the ground, doesn't it? Versus if I were to go back and forth here with my brush blend, it would seem like the ground up there, but I want it to be a curved line. I want to show the curved line, the curvature of the line. Okay, I'm going to leave that purple down in there because what if there's shadows shining through? We want things to look super cool, awesome sauce. We add a little bit of lightness up in here. Now we're going to beef up some of the other colors. Let's pick the red next. Red is absolutely gorgeous. Now this red can get kind of intense. So we're going to let it touch the yellow and blend. And also let it go a little bit over some of the trees. Not all of them, but we're just adding a little bit of that red. Now I added a little bit of a darker red in there because we want to break up the color. There's always a variation in color. So if you think, oh, this should be all this color, say we were painting an apple and it had to be all red, believe it or not, you want to break up the colors immediately. You want medium yellow, you red, medium, light, all the different colors of that variation. It makes it look so much more real. And we want, it, we want to trick the eye. And believe it or not, you don't want to make it too perfect. If you make it too perfect, the eye actually doesn't like it. The eye will pick one small area and then adjust everything else. So if you make it too perfect, the eye doesn't have an opportunity to um, adjust it. Now I'm going to go down to this purple flower, um, little bush. I'm going to make it with the cobalt blue and a red because I tried the purple before and it wasn't good enough. So I'm going to make my own purple with blue and red and I'm just going to bounce some of it. Now what I'm going to do, see I'm, the green bushes are behind it, but what I'm going to do to make sure that I, that is lightest on the top, medium in the middle, darkest on the bottom, and add a little bit of that white on the top. See how that little bit of white, I'm not getting too specific, we're not trying to be fancy here because the looser your brush strokes, the better. It's kind of like that first date's real tense and tight, but then as you get along, you're like, oh, dude, we can relax and have some fun. It's a lot better. It just looks better. Okay, now I'm going to go down to the ground again. I'm using flat brush blends instead of going around and put those in there. Now we have a nice scene. Look at our scene. In just a matter of minutes, we were able to just splash a color onto the canvas. Then we added that green and that grounding line and we now have a really pretty, super simple little fall scene. Also, you don't have to paint. I'm coming up with a coloring book and I'll show you some images of it tomorrow maybe and you can copy them and color them if you want. You, it would be beneficial to copy them onto cardstock paper because then you can color them with paint even if you wanted and it's so much fun to do something well besides Netflix I think I've watched everything I came to the end of Netflix and now I had to do something so this is why I'm here I'm gonna add some red in here bounce it over in this area I'm just adding some variation now that purple right there I like it but it almost to me looks like I could turn it into something so say you're painting along and you're like oh dude I want to change things up kinda like the furniture in your room I don't know if anybody has changed their furniture in their house in this last week but so many people including me have changed up the furniture in order to do something and so that's what we're going to do. We're going to change this up. Look at what happens. We have those flat brush blends going this way. Look at what happens if we just turn this into a bush. Let's just go ahead and turn it into a bush. And now we have two. We have two bushes. I'm going to go ahead and add another bush right next to it. Let's just make it two bushes. So we changed up the furniture in our painting very simple gave us something to do now all of a sudden we have a couple of really nice little bushes right there along with our first bush which was a total accident we always want to say hey man thanks for the accidents well not in our cars because those aren't any good but thank you for the purple blotch that ended up there because it turned into a bush that turned us into another bush the top of the bush will always be the lightest because of the way the sun falls even if it was moon the moon out there you would still have the lightest on the top darkest on the bottom and in order to trick the eye into seeing 3d we have to 
sort of adhere to that rule, which is a really, really simple rule. Of, and if you look out any window, you'll notice that most of the bushes are lightest on the top and darkest on the bottom. So we'll go ahead and add that darkness. Now I just put blue and red. I am, and I'm not trying to overmix my paint. When you're overmixing your paint, it goes flat right away. It's not bad, and a lot of people call that mud. However, that's not a fair term because I've seen tons and tons of people. I've had thousands of students, literally hundreds of classes, and so many people have done that, and it still turns out really pretty. But you are trying to get a flow. See, I'm keeping the darker on the bottom, and that blue and red is mixing right on the canvas. It's in the brush. There's red on one side and blue on the other, and it turns out purple when I blend them together in the brush. Now we have two bushes, one bush. Let's put this bush in front of that bush, and look at how easy. And I want to ground it again by putting them on top, but now we have two bushes. One bush, two bush, well, three bushes, but let's put this bush in front of that bush. And like, oh no, what do I do? I'll show you what to do. Put a little tiny dot of white, and let's just put this bush in front of that by putting the light side right there in front of it. See how we just overlapped the bush? Just a little bit of a blend. Let's blend this out a little bit. Maybe just add a little streak of white, because we know this puzzle piece still has to have the lightest on the top, darkest on the bottom. Let's add a little bit of that color blend. Now we have a nice scene. Let's go back to this green. This green is a real thin wash green. And we're going to go ahead and beef it up a little. I'm going to add a little bit of green. You can kind of see the green on there, but I'm going to even deepen it more by adding a dot of that cobalt blue. So now I have blue on there, you can see, and a little bit of green. Once again, I'm not mixing the colors on the palette at all. I don't want them to mix on the palette. I want to undermix them so they get a massive variety of color in here. Let's go in here. Oh, look, the blue is real intense. Let's continue to add some of that green going around our pretty little bush, going over the tree trunks because we know that the bushes are going to go in front. Something has to go in front. Something has to go in back. There's always overlapping in nature. You can look out any window and you will notice that the car is overlapping the tree and the tree is overlapping the bush and the bush is overlapping the field. There's always overlapping. So when we purposely add it, we trick the eye into seeing 3D in our paintings. Now look at how much just one little layer goes and adds to this whole painting. Just one more layer. And I beefed it up more with a little bit of blue instead of the green. Now I know I'm going to have to go behind this bush because the purple bush is in front of the green. But look at how much. Let's go ahead and add another little bush here. Maybe a dash of green over here. Once again, I'm relying on my eye. My eye knows. My mind does not know. The mind will try and tell me what to do, but my eye I can always trust. Back to that clothing store. You know what you like. It's easy to see with your eye. That's basically your intuition in art is trusting your eye. You know how they say trust your gut. You can trust your gut. You can trust your eye. But as soon as you start thinking about it is when you start to overwork the painting. Okay, so here's more green. Touch the blue. I'm going to come over here and add a little bit of that green. I'm trying to pull the scene in by adding the dark, a little bit of darkness pulling me this way. Let's go ahead to the other side and add some green. I didn't add some here earlier, but I'm just going to add some right now. Add some over in here. I push the viewer's eye down when I add that darker color. Very nice, super easy, super simple. Now we have, and we'll add some dashes of green because we know sometimes the green may be from bushes and things. That was a pretty simple scene, huh? We got some nice, the nice color, nice fall trees. We walk into the scene, we can see the background sky is in there. All right, now let's go back to those um, tree trunks. Let's beef them up a little. We did every single piece the exact same way. We first established it to let our eye see because our eye knows what we like. And now we're going to come back and beef it up. Once we get something that we like, then we can start building on it. I'm going to use a little tiny bit of black, a little tiny bit of that brown, 
and come right in here and beef them up once again pretty simple just straight up and down you always want to add a little bit of a split makes it kind of nice come in here it's I'm gonna let it touch some of those colors so it drags them out drags them out let's add another tree over in here now that tree may be softer in color because it's more in the distance things that are further away are lighter in color things that are closer to us are more intense in color you can look at the mountains around you to see this you'll notice that the mountains that are higher up or further away are actually lighter in color when we add that to our paintings lighter in color as we go further away it actually tricks the eye once again into seeing 3d now if I get hey Jamie if I get too thick I can always use my brush you notice this brush goes thick or thin I'm using the thin I use flat brushes they are the best if you if I were able to show you my oil station this is my water station you would see that I almost use exclusively flat brushes because of ease I am one of those people who wants things to be easy it's just better what the heck go for the easy it's kind of like uh, kind of like donuts just give me some man <laughs> yeah the donut place is closed so we're all in a little bit of lockdown when that happens you know it's serious okay so now we're beefing up look at how much this little tiny bit of beef up compared to these and these were there to establish that if I liked it or not because if I didn't like it I could easily once again go in and completely wipe it out within a second I could literally change anything around so you want to let your eyes see it first okay I'm gonna beef these up a little tiny bit just a little bit come in here add hey Corinne how are you I miss you Corinne has taken lots of classes from me she's an extremely good painter I hope you're being safe yeah you she works in the medical industry so we want her to be safe all the people out there in the medical industry we so appreciate you you have no idea praying for you meditating on your well-being yeah you're so valuable to us now more than ever even before okay so we're beefing it up a little bit adding those little tiny hit and miss on the on the branches because you know that not everywhere are you going to see the branches sometimes the branches go be under the tree and and then on top of it under the tree and then on top of it and you want it to be a hit and a miss you don't want everything to be perfect if it's too perfect it's tough for the eye to try and add its own detail remember your human eye will add all the detail it not wants and it likes detail now I'm gonna go back to a little bit of a lighter color just a little bit more of a uh, sienna and come in here and add some up into the trees I don't know if you can see that but look at what happens remember we talked about how if you can't see the color you can always add a dot of white to it that will give it up I don't know if you can see that I have bright lights on in here so make sure you can see it okay we now have a really nice tree I'm just adding details little tiny details details I'm gonna go ahead and add another tree because it looks like another one wants to show up what the heck I don't have a problem with that we like trees I'm gonna add another one here we may as well what happens if I add a tree up in this greenery so that not all the trees are going up and down some of the trees are going sideways because we know in nature that sometimes branches do do that they go sideways they go up and down they go in all directions and we want them to go in all directions okay add another little bush down in here I can hear somebody knocking on my studio door but I'm not allowed to be open as much as I want people to come in and hang ten with me it just can't happen we gotta wait a little bit people so if you're outside my studio you're the one knocking on my door I can't I legally cannot go and let people hang out which is what we usually do hang out and talk about mm, nothing <laughs> just stuff okay another tree I'm gonna add another one over in here because I know as things go further in the distance they're lighter in color but they would be there now that looks really really great we have beautiful color all over splashes of color super simple we just added some color 
reds and yellows and greens. This green is too solid. Can you see that? It's just too solid. In nature, there would be more variation. So I'm going to go right to this lemony yellow. I'm actually going to add white to it. You see the white and lemon yellow, I did not mix it. I don't want to mix them. I want it to mix on the canvas. We talked about French Impressionism. It is the most popular paintings on the planet and it's for a reason. It's because you get the most variation in color. You want to get lots of variation. So let's go right to this green. We have white on one side, green on the other. Let's just pick one. Now I'm going to rely on the green to start picking up on that color. See how it's picking up and I just put all of that bushes in front of everything again. Got to go back and grab some more. A little bit of white, a little bit of yellow. I'm getting it kind of rich on there. Somebody is still knocking at the door. Oh well, they'll eventually get it. You can come in and paint, but not today. Okay, and now I'm adding the green to the bottom. See how I'm using the brush blend, the curve line going this way, like a smiley, and then going this way, like top of an egg? Because this is the bottom, and that is the top. Now that was a real dark green. I'm going to go around my bush, because I like it. I'm going to hit that yellow. Just hit it, here and there here and there and look at how much just from this side to this side how much I beefed it up in just one layer. If you were to go to oil painting it would be like working with butter. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit more of that green to the bottom. A little bit more. I'm going right on top of the trees right on top of them. There we go. And I'm going to take some of that green. They're still knocking. And I'm going to take some of that green and put it up in here in the trees because I know that as trees grow together there are splashes of different colors. You know, a, a branch may have grown over in this area. I'm just going to go ahead and put some green out in there. I'm just beefing it up just a little bit just a little bit. All right, there we go. Doesn't that look so simple? We have this one little bush down in here. We don't want to forget about him. We turned him in. It started off as a green blob. Now we turned it into a bush. We're going to add some highlights to the top. Now we have some nice green highlights on the top of that bush. We're going to go ahead and add some highlights to the top of this bush. Not being specific on our brush blends, just here and there, hit and miss, all the while keeping the light on the top, medium in the middle, dark on the bottom, tricking the eye into seeing 3D. I'm going to add a dot of white. Now that seems like a lot of white, but your first brush blend is your darkest, and then you just keep moving it around. See how I just went, took this bush and went all the way to the ground? Look at how cool that works on pushing this bush back. It pushed by putting it all the way to the ground, it pushed that one back. Now I can go on this one, put that same dot of white, and push this one back a little bit. Now I like, oh, okay, so two, two bushes. I want to push this one back a little bit more and keep this one in forward. What I'm going to do is add a little tiny bit of that brown grounding color. See, now I'm going to start the blend down in here. I'm going to take it and push it right back up there. See how when I push it around the bush, it pushes this one back and pulls that one forward. Now we have a nice layer. Super cool. I'm going to let that green, I'm going to touch it here and there touch it here and there because I have a nice blend. You do the same thing in oil. When you get a nice blend going on the tip of your brush, you don't you want to take advantage of it. Okay, well now we have now we have a nice blend of color and everything looks like it's laid out. At this point, I would let it rest so that if I did want to add more detail, it would just beef it up further this way, bring it closer to me. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll try and come back and paint again and again because this is what we do. We lay low, hang out, and do relaxing things. You all take very good care of yourself. Thank you so much for wa watching. I'm waving at all of you, giving you a big hug and appreciation. 
you just go get yourself a little set of paints and paint on paper, paint on cardstock. You will just feel better because like me, you probably got to the end of Netflix and you need something else to do. All right. Love you all. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.